Get some instant analysis. Welcome in former MLB executive of the year, Jim Bowden, CBS Sports MLB writer Matt Snyder. We said before the series that we would not be surprised if the Phillies won this series. We are not surprised now that they have completed it. Jim, your reaction to what you saw here in this game four, Nick Castellanos, Trey Turner, and an incredible bullpen. Yeah, and the fact that Nick Castellanos becomes the first player ever in baseball history to have multiple homers in back-to-back -back games was incredible. But I think you nailed it on the outset. Uh, Rob Thompson was the player of this game, uh, not Trey <coughs> Turner's, not the homers by Castellanos. It was Rob Thompson, and he managed with urgency. He had his matchups he wanted to go with. He had his pockets he wanted to deal with. And he wasn't afraid to bring in his top two relievers in the sixth and seventh inning when it mattered the most. He wanted Alvarado to make sure he put Olsen down. He wanted to make sure he had Kimbrell in there at the most important time. And look, for the Atlanta Braves, they had the bases loaded in the seventh inning, and they had the MVP of the league at the plate in Ronald Acuna Jr. And he hits the fly ball to center field and is caught out there. A nice catch in center field. He made it look more difficult than he had to, to be honest. But uh, here's the play right here. He kind of hesitated and kind of jumped. Uh, it, it was really an, an easier catch than he made it look. But that was the game right there. So Acuna had the shot. Bases Chuck couldn't do anything with it. But again, I love what Rob Thompson did, and he wasn't afraid to have the game. But who would have thought the game would finish with Matt Strom against Vaughn Grissom? So, look, we covered the Phillies last year in the playoffs and in the World Series, and the one thing that stood out was the kind of human beings that are in that dugout and how competitive they are. And this is a really, really close uh, group. Reminds me a little bit of those 84 Red Sox way back when. Uh, th this is a really, really tough group, but um, there's no doubt in my mind they're going to be the favorites to get back to the World Series when they get ready to face Arizona. Yeah, and I actually think that they're the favorites to win it all. I, I would take them right now over both the Rangers and the Astros. I know that's a tough call for many because the Rangers offense looks so good. And the Astros, I mean, they're the Astros. You know, they're there every single year. But I, I mean, you see the odds right there. I, I'm riding the Phillies on that one. I, they're, they're built so much better for the postseason than the regular season. With the two horses atop the rotation, Ranger Suarez gives you those five innings that you need as their kind of number three starter with the way they want to operate in the bullpen. And again, as Jim said, masterclass by Rob Thompson tonight. Uh, the power. How about the power up and down the lineup? They've got Castellanos in the seven hole. Uh, you know, it's they, they can do it from any spot in the order at any t given time. It, it was funny seeing the Bryce Harper get the intentional walk there in the first inning tonight before any runs were on the board. Like, you know, it's it, that's how good he is. It's a big playoff spot. You don't want Bryce to hurt you, but they can hurt you from any spot in the lineup right now. And man, Trey Turner. What can you say about how hot he is right now? He is out of his mind hot ever since that standing ovation when the Phillies fans wanted to cheer him out of his slump. It actually worked. He's been insane ever since then. Uh, what a fun team to watch. And let's also point out that they completely controlled this series. The one game that the Braves did win, the Phillies led for most of that game. And they were up 4 nothing going into the bottom of the sixth there. They still had a lead going into the bottom of the eighth in that game. Uh, they actually, the Phillies almost took the lead back in the top of the ninth. It took a great play by Michael Harris to prevent that. So the Phillies really controlled this thing basically right from the start of game one all the way through the end of this game. Uh, the Braves had their chances. They just didn't get it done. I don't know how much we can lean on the rest thing when the Braves just didn't hit at all in these two games in Philadelphia where it, they should have, uh, you know, knocked off the rust by then. I love that you brought up the fact about the standing ovation for Trey Turner in August. He signs his monster contract. Nick Castellanos has said, hey, Philly fans are going to love you, okay? You come here and play, and they're going to love you. They, they help Nick Castellanos. He got booed last season. They pick him up. They do the same for Trey Turner, the first Philly with four hits in a playoff game. Nick Castellanos, first player, as we mentioned, in MLB history to hit multiple homers in back-to-back postseason games. We talked about how the Braves were relentless all season long. The Phillies are now relentless because it's an unselfish club that plays with a lot of heart, a lot of emotion. And then you see, because I don't want to gloss over this, we mentioned it, but Jim, what you saw Rob Thompson do in this game was textbook. He didn't necessarily look at analytics. 
He went to the right matchups. I mean, this was a clinic in the postseason for Rob Thompson. I know you said he's a player of the game, but explain for people to realize how, like, it's great that Nick Castellanos and Trey Trump are going to show the home runs, but this is clinic postseason managing. Yeah, it certainly was. I mean, look, to, to bring Alvarado and Kimbrell in that early, I mean, that's not something he's done really in the regular season whatsoever, but he had a plan. And let's give Dave Dombrowski, the president of the of the Phillies, credit because he loaded up his bullpen with four left-handers. They used all of them tonight but in the right spots. And they knew exactly when they wanted to match up. And, you know, Rob had the real good feeling when the score was two to one and three to one that, hey, I better not wait to the ninth inning. I can't let this game turn. That's one of the things that Rob keeps telling me, you know, when he's making this move, instead of saving Alvarado and Kimbrell the eighth and ninth, his feeling is, the game is gonna turn. Atlanta has chance to do damage. I have to stop it here. I'll worry about the ninth inning when I get there, and I still have other pitchers like Soto and Strom uh, and Hoffman that I can go to later. So just being able to get the guys he wants in the matchup at the time of the game where you need it the most. And we saw Rob do it last year in the postseason. We're seeing it now. I do want to point out something that's very interesting, right? Three of the four teams left standing are all wild card teams. I will absolutely argue that the five days off has something to do with that. I don't care what anyone says. I was a GM for 16 years, and I can tell you the three-day of the All-Star break, I was always worried as a GM, let alone the four-day All-Star break. I was concerned about the timing of hitters, and a lot of times it affects it. That being said, I also want to mention this. Look at the managers that are left standing. Bruce Bochy is going to be a Hall of Fame manager. Dusty Baker is going to be a Hall of Fame manager. Rob Thompson's one of the best managers in baseball, and I think Tori Lovello is as well. But look at look at three teams are 90 and 72, exactly the same record. Houston, Texas, and Philadelphia, regular season, 90 and 72. They all have elite managers as they're sitting here at the end. And by the way, for people that want to know, the tiebreaker if there's a World Series, if Texas is in, they will have home field advantage. Uh, if they play Philadelphia, and if Houston ends up playing Philadelphia, Philadelphia will have home field advantage. All right, Matt, we, we heard what Jim said right there about the layoff, and it's it's not ideal, yeah. but you got to show up. That, that's This is a tournament. So you, you earn that first round by, and we know that baseball is an everyday sport, so it's, it is hard. Those layoffs are difficult. It, 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 we know that. Yeah. That's a fact. But you got to find a way to turn it on. Ronald Acuna didn't turn it on. Matt Olson didn't turn it on. The, the numbers here for Acuna in the series, two for 14, no RBIs. Matt Olson, four for 16, no RBIs. Um, you, you can't have this. Like, this, this well, is the kind of stuff, like, best, Acuna like, had a 40-70 season, and Matt Olson had 54 homers and 139 RBIs. So give credit to the but Phillies. A, a team. Also look at the other series too, right? Mookie Betts didn't hit. Right, uh, that's, that's where I'm going. Freddie. That's exactly yeah. where the two biggest stars in the top two teams in the National League, Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, a combined one for 21. And I'll do the quick math here for Acuna and Olsen. Six for 30 in this series. The stars have to be the stars, Matt. And the stars were not the stars yeah. for neither LA or Atlanta. It's true. And for the Astros, they were. The Astros guys showed up right from the get-go. Jose Altuve hit a home run right away. Jordan Alvarez had a huge game in game, uh, game one for the Astros. So they actually know what they're doing with it. Whatever it is that they're, you know, the Astros went 7-0 and on the AL side of the playoffs last year after the bye. They came out and won game one. Then they won uh, games three and four, and they advanced with relative ease. They're the ones that somehow have it figured out after that five-day layoff. I'm in favor of consolidating it. Uh, just to be clear, I understand that several days off, you might it might mess with your timing, but um, having to win an extra round is still a much bigger disadvantage, in my opinion, because you could have upsets. I mean, I think the Milwaukee Brewers would gladly, uh, the Tampa Bay Rays would gladly go and say, hey, we'll trade places with you guys and we'll take the buy and we'll give it a go. Um, it's Look, there's always funkiness in the postseason. And I agree that once you get up to five days off, then it is like, hey, 
if a player was injured for five days, now you start talking about if he needs a minor league rehab assignment before jumping right back in because he needs to get his timing back. I get that. Um, but we have upsets a lot. Uh, the Tampa Bay Rays won 99 games, and they got their teeth kicked in against the Rangers in two games at home, and they kicked the ball all around the yard. And it, it, if that would have happened after a bye, we would have said, oh, hey, they're rusty. Look, they can't even field the ball. But it happened with the exact same number of days off as the Rangers had. So it's, I, it, for me, I agree that the days off are probably an issue, but more likely it's just small samples. I mean, we saw the Braves lose two of three to the A's this year. We saw the Braves lose two of three at home to the White Sox this year. And those were not after five days off. They were just in the middle of the season. Funky stuff happens in small samples. Uh, and I will say, and Hakeem, we talked about this earlier. The thing about the Phillies is they're built. Sure, they're built for 162. They won 90 games. They're a good regular season team, but they're much better built for the postseason. And they showed it last year up until the World Series, and they've shown it so far this year. I mean, look, yeah, the three 100 win teams, they've all gone home. But look, I, yeah. we understand Philadelphia beat Atlanta because their pitching's better. You know, I, I don't think there's any doubt that the hitters weren't quite right, but I'm not so sure Philadelphia doesn't win that series anyway. Texas was a better team than Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay didn't have Wander Franco at shortstop, Brandon Lau at second base, and they didn't have a healthy Jose Siri, although he did play in, in one of those games. Um, Texas against Baltimore, look, it was Baltimore's first time into the postseason. A lot of their guys had no postseason experience whatsoever. Grayson Rodriguez didn't pitch like Grayson Rodriguez in game two. Um, I think we understand how Texas could be Baltimore, but I do think five days is too much. I'm not saying that's why the teams are advancing. Look, LA had no rotation left, right? Gonsolin IL, yeah. uh, Dustin May IL, Julio Urias administrative leave, Kershaw had his worst outing of his career, which was a nightmare. Walker Bueller never got back from Tommy John, so they won 100 games, but we understand why Gallon and Kelly and Corbin Carroll uh, were able to beat them. So we're not taking anything away from the teams advancing at all, but I do think we have to look at this postseason and say this. Last two years in the wild card series, seven of the eight were sweeps. Seven of the eight. Just make it one game. Two out of three is not making much of a difference. Make it one game and shorten it up so it's two or three days off, not four or five days off. Three days off is fine. I think they need to correct it. And I'm not saying the results would be any different. And I think we have a, an unbelievable exciting postseason. I love the fact we have three 90 teams, uh, 90 win teams left. And I'm so excited about the man, the four managers left standing are all elite managers. I can't wait. Yeah, I, I, I Jim, you know this, and I don't really even have to tell you it, but extra games for TV. I mean, it, we know who pays the bills. Yeah. <laughs> we, we know why things are done the way they are. We know why the NBA contracts are out of control because the networks have control and that's how it works. So in the framework of that, we enjoy what we see and we have four teams with less than 91 wins, uh, 300 and 54 combined wins with the four teams still standing. That's the fewest among the final four ever. Uh, 90 win Philadelphia Phillies, 90 win Rangers, 90 win Astros, and 84 win Diamondbacks. So if, if you're the Braves here who won 104 games, best record in baseball, led baseball in nearly every offensive category, what do you do going into the offseason, Jim? What are you doing if you're Alex Anthopoulos and you just re-signed Brian Snicker to a contract and you've got all these young guns and you came up short? What, what do you do? I'm going to keep working on the starting pitching, right? So, um, you know, it's not their fault that Kyle Wright had surgery and was out for the year. Max Fried had a blister. When he did come back, he walked four guys in his five innings. He wasn't ready, and he hadn't pitched in September 18th. Uh, we didn't see Charlie Morton because he had a finger injury. You know, that's three-fifths of your rotation right there, right? And the other starters, the rookie, Bryce Elder, and, of course, Spencer Strider, who pitched good enough to win. I mean, the, the problem was the lineup didn't perform. That being said... Was the lineup perfect in Atlanta? I don't think it was. You know, Kevin Pillar was starting in left field tonight. Um, I, I had a conversation with Alex Anthopoulos twice during the year, asked if he was going to upgrade left field. He was very comfortable uh, with what he had, but that, that was kind of an, an, an issue for me uh, with that team. So, look, I think this team is better than what we saw in the postseason. They, they were the best team in baseball in the regular season, not by a little, but by a lot. But if you don't pitch in the postseason, you're going home. 
Freed wasn't able to pitch. Morton didn't pitch. Wright didn't pitch. They went home. Dodgers didn't have Bueller or May or Gonsolin or Urias, and they went home. Uh, Milwaukee Brewers, they didn't have Brandon Woodruff. They went home. I mean, if you get to October, you better have your pitching lined up. Philadelphia had Wheeler, Noller, Nola, and Suarez, and they all pitched well, and here they go. Avaldi pitched like he did when he won a world championship in 2018 with Boston. Jordan Montgomery, ERA of two in the regular season, two in the postseason. They're going to keep on going. Verlander looked great. Framber looked good. Javier looked good. Arquiti looked good. Houston's going to go on. Let me tell you this. In the NHL, have the goaltender in the playoffs. You may run the table and win a Stanley Cup. In MLB, have the starting pitching if you want to run the table and win a world championship.